you'll eventually come across a fantastical world where people live in the towns, villages, mountains, and rivers as your creative powers begin to take effect. Every thought is unquestionably true. Whatever it is, every imagined action of yours will instantly become a tangible reality. We are constantly told this in the Old Testament, yet the language is vivid and difficult for men to understand. Jeremiah 14.14 14 has the phrases, Thou, Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Forsake us not. How could someone exist and steal the name I am away from the Lord, whose name is I am? You would cease to exist if you were unable to say I am. You might even go completely insane and lose all memory of who you are. But you can't stop knowing that you are. And because God is still loyal to his word, whatever is buried in your soul must come to the surface. Then you take on the role of God to walk the streets proclaiming, I am God, without having personally seen his plan of salvation, unfolding within you would be the height of insanity. Without any proof that you are, you cannot declare with conviction, I am God. But you keep it a secret when he appears to you. You simply recognize it and respond appropriately. And the only way he will ever expose himself to you, as you, is by having his son stand in front of you and address you as father. You will be able to say, I have discovered David, when the 89th song is finished because he informed you, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. When you offer this incredible insight, some people will believe you and some people won't. You shouldn't expect universal acceptance, but you should allow for both. Because this relationship was established before the world understood you were the everlasting God and Father. When this lead stands before you, you will know exactly who he is and who you are. Do not let it disturb you. Tell it. Then go about your business as usual until the time limit expires. After your flesh and blood garment is taken off, your flaws are eradicated, and you awaken to God. You'll soon be able to support your statements with evidence from others who heard and took you at your word. They will also be awakened by the Ancient of Days. I am not what mortal sight can see me to be. I am the Ancient of Days, and I have existed from the dawn of time until the end of time. I became so engrossed in my creation over time. I am the Melchizedek of the Bible. Whoever has no parents, no ancestors, no beginning of time, and no end of time. I am my own creation, eternally dormant and being buried. David, my son, will appear before me to see my parenthood. David stands in for everything I have given life to through experience because I am the father of all life. David's father, who goes by the name Jesse, which translates to I am, remarked, Thou art my son, today I have born thee. When he recognized his son, you will have gone through this experience when you emerge from the fiery furnaces that each of us must and will go through. Did not the Lord inform us? You have endured a great deal of pain at my expense. I act in my own self-interest. How could God bestow honor on anyone else when there was only one God? I won't stand for the profanity of my name. As he rises from the dead, he has been entangled in his creation. He is still God, but after ascending within his own creation in the shape of that creation, he has grown significantly. All of us are a part of the human race, which encompasses rivers, mountains, cities, hills, and villages, and which engages in the grand drama that is life. Forever, all men. Have you ever laid in a chair with your eyes closed and imagined a stream of water that was so real you could put your hands in it, and they were moist when you cupped them and brought them to your mouth? You would know you had entered a very real and private condition if you could feel the water flowing down your throat. You will soon have that kind of power. That will be your power because it is God tomorrow, when everything will be at your disposal and based on your own incredible human imagination. Depending on your preferences, you can use your time here to test your creative ability. It's possible that you have desires but feel you won't be able to fulfill them because you don't think you can afford them enjoy them, or have the time or knowledge to do so. There are a thousand barriers keeping you from getting it. However, one can imagine owning it after learning that one's imagination shapes reality. However, simply picturing is not enough. 
You must have enough confidence in your fictitious action to believe it actually took place. Before you can wait patiently and trust for your assumption to come true, you must be 100% confident that you are the person you wish. After all, the fictitious act will ripen and flower at its own appointed hour. If it seems to be taking a while, wait until it reaches the shore. It won't be late. The link between your imaginal act and its realization is your faith, which is nothing more than your subjective appropriation of your objective hope and thinking that your appropriated desire is genuine. Faith is the link between you and its objectivity. Just let things be and be God. Let there be light, said God at that point. After his creative deed, God caused the sun and moon to appear, maintaining it all through trust in the awareness that it would be impossible to bring it about without faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the proof of things unseen. If you want your imagined act to be real, it has to objectify itself in your world. Now, in order to properly understand scripture, you must be conversant with the experiences detailed there because they are not of this world. The Bible makes reference to the new man that is in you. That kind of man can believe that an imagined deed could truly occur, so I'm appealing to him. The outside Yunus can be touched, seen and heard, and it is a real thing. It builds its beliefs on the knowledge that its five senses and reason supply. Nevertheless, I'm arguing for the Christ who resides inside of you and who is both a creation of your own incredible human imagination and the Lord. You possess a beautiful creative power that is dormant and will eventually manifest as you and not as someone else. This will be done when the wall of perdition between the two of you is removed. I mention him, but I also imply that he is there. However, I only mean one person when I say that I am. Christ therefore becomes fully me, uniting with me. But I won't even be aware that I'm here until I've experienced what the Bible claims only happened to Jesus. My spiritual birth was a result of the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, due to the assertion that he emerged from his grave after being buried. There is only one tomb and one skull. Therefore, when I awoke inside my skull, I realized I am alone. Is it not I who previously slept there? Who was going through this, if you had to ask? I am. And I am not too, I would reply. One is I. Me. I awoke in Golgotha and emerged there, as it is said that Bethlehem will bring forth a mate for me. God alone will exercise authority. Try to control this God and remember that anything is possible. Try envisioning something that both your reason and senses say is impossible. If so, God says that you did not govern your world. That's the way God works. He visualizes it and makes it appear. His situation. The old of days are mentioned in the Bible, but not specifically described. The three types of writing are journalism, literature, and scripture. Only journalism or literature can be studied, not the Bible. Everything in the Bible becomes human because it is all revelation and vision. And when the visions take control of you, everything is meant to evoke rather than to describe. There are people in the cities, villages, mountains, and rivers. Enjoy manifest.